All right, I'm going to show you how to create a Google form, which is more of a survey. Um, so I'm going to log into Google, get into my Google Drive. And then the same way I created a document and a presentation, I'm going to click that red Create button once I'm in my Drive, and it's a Google Form. You can set it up as like a quiz for students. It's designed more as a survey. Um, I still use it as quizzes. It's not going to grade them for you, so like when you're filling it out, you're not going to mark that any of them are a correct answer. Um, but it'll still organize it nicely onto an Excel type of page. Um, with all the student answers. So when you make your form, you'll start with the title. I'm going to call mine Trees. And then it says Trees up there. Just like my other ones, it's going to save automatically. One thing you're going to want to do when you make a form is uncheck this first box. Um, if that's checked, it's going to require them to have a D49 login, which I don't think you're going to need for, for your purposes. This way they can access it. Um, quicker and get to it from home, whatever they need to do. Most of the rest, um, you can leave unchecked. Um, you know, if it's they're pretty obvious, like if you wanted to shuffle the question order, then you can check that one, um, depending on what you're going for. Um, you might want to might want to change the theme. So the theme is going to be kind of your background and how it's set up. So it has different fancy choices. I'm going to go ahead and go with this science lab one. So that's how my background will look. I'm going to go back to edit questions and when I click under question type it shows me the different types of questions that I can ask. Um, as a teacher for your purposes you're probably going to stick with these first four uh, but there might be a time where you'd want to use one of those other ones too. Um, for this first one I'm going to choose a text one so that means the student will type in text as their answer. Since I'm not requiring them to log in, my first question is usually going to be, what is your name? That way I know who's saying what if it's the type of survey where I want that information. Um, help text would just be like a subtitle, and I'll show you an example in the next one where you might want to do that. Um, so what is your name? They're going to type in text, and then I'm just going to click done. This is how it'll look for them. What is your name with a blank? If I want to see how it actually is going to look, I can click on this View Live Form button here, and that'll show it with the background and the fancy font and all that. So that's what students will actually see. So I'm going to go back to my questions. I want to add another item. So it's going to pop up with my same choices there. This time I'm going to choose Check Boxes. And I'm going to say, what parts of our tree unit did you like? And now I'm going to give them some choices. So I click next to the check, and I'm able to put whatever I would like there. First one, I'm going to say the movie. I can keep clicking as many times as I would like. Um, so there's no limit or set format there. Uh, so I got my movie, maybe they liked the art project, the research portion, the book I read, or the presentation that I showed them. So I gave them five choices. So help text, I might put something like choose two, just to tell them how many I would like them to check. So that might be the type of thing you'd put under help text. Um, different different types of questions will have different things under advanced settings, um, like shuffling it um, or other more advanced things that most likely you're not going to want to use for your purposes. But depending on the type of question, you might want to check that out. It might be something that will be helpful. Click done, and now I see how that's going to look. If I want to see it on the live form of how students would view it, uh, now I see that it's set up that they could do checkboxes. I'll just show you one more. So under add item, um, I'm going to type in what would you like to study next. So I might choose paragraph text and then they could, that'd be the same as the text one with their name. It would just show them more space, like a paragraph size amount of space. Maybe I'm going to do multiple choice and give them some choices. 
So the difference between multiple choice and the check boxes is multiple choice they'll only be allowed to select one. Space, plants, animals, habitats. And where is it? And then I'm going to type, so I'm click on done. Each of them will have this required question. If you check that, they won't be able to submit the quiz until they've answered all of them. So that might be something you would want or not. Click done. So you can see the multiple choice has a circle. Check boxes have a square. Um, and the difference will be check boxes, they can choose as many as they'd like. Multiple choice, only one. I'm going to view it live. See if it looks the way I want it to. So fairly simple when students get there. They'll type in their name, check boxes, multiple choice, and click Submit. All right, once you feel like your quiz is good, you'll click the Send Form button. If you want to send just the form, you can always um, copy the link and send just that out. Um, when you first pull this up, I've already used my form, so it didn't pop up for me. No, oh, yes, it did. Okay. Um, so it's going to pop up this choose response destination. So you can choose when students um, give their answers if you want it to show up in a new spreadsheet. And this will be the title of it, trees with, parent with responses in parentheses. Or you can choose the one to keep it in an existing spreadsheet and then it'll always show up in one spreadsheet. So like if you did five different forms, um, it'll always go into one. I usually click the new one, it just makes it easier. Um, when I want to view the responses, it's labeled clearly for me to access right away. And you can check if you want to always do, do that, and that's what I'm going to do. So after I've gone through my lesson and students have all answered that, um, what will happen is there's my survey trees in my Google Drive, and you see now it just popped up. After they submit their responses, I'll be able to click on this one and it's going to tell me when they took it and then what they answered for each of these. I can then organize the data. So this is actually set up like an Excel sheet um, that you can, you know, um, organize in different ways. Like you might organize it by alphabetical or organize it um, by all the students who answered this one a certain way. Um, so it'll automatically, as soon as they click submit, it will pop up live here. So sometimes if I'm giving a quiz in class, I'll have the students work on the quiz, I'll have this page pulled up, and as soon as they click submit, it will it'll show up right away on mine, and I can kind of check their answers, make sure they're giving their, their best effort right away. Um, so that's pretty much how you create a Google Form and how you view the responses, it'll pop up automatically um, after you create the form.